This is Aubrey Everett, and this is African American Crash Course History. So imagine you want to run an event such as a school picnic, festival, or a parade. Well, for your event, you're going to need a venue, food, signs, beverages, and merchandise. But there's a problem. You can't afford all these expenses on your own. You're going to need loaners and sponsors to help this event happen. This is exactly who philanthropist Mary Ellen Pleasant was to one of the most crucial slave revolts in American history. Born August 19, 1817. She was born in Philadelphia, she stated in an interview, but her exact birthplace is unknown, as well as whether she was born free or not. By her own account, she was born to a free black mother from Louisiana and a Hawaiian father. At a young age, her father sent her to live with the Hussey family on the island of Nantucket, Massachusetts. There, she worked as a clerk at the dry goods store and served as an apprentice to Grandma Mary Hussey. There, she gained valuable lessons on how to run a business. In her biography, she stated, I often wonder what I have been like with an education. I have let books alone and studied men and women a good deal. I've always noticed when I have something to say, people listen, they never go to sleep on me. In her early 20s, Pleasant left and moved to Boston. She began working as a tailor when she met her first husband, James Henry Smith. She became heavily involved in Boston's abolitionist movement which had figures such as William Floyd Garrison and Maria Weston Chapman. Soon after meeting, he died in 1848 and she was left with an inheritance of around $45,000. That is equivalent to $1,683,064.15 of today's money. She remarried several years later to John Pleasant, whom historians believe she met on one of the passages of the Underground Railroad. Mary and James, along with their daughter Lizzie, left for San Francisco at the height of the gold rush. She soon found work as a cook and eavesdropped on wealthy employers. With the money, she invested her earnings in stock and money markets. It's quite possible that the jobs she had as a domestic were a cover she was using because she clearly made her money from investments. Hudson, the biographer, said in the interview. Mary Ellen Pleasant continued to pursue activist work, such as allowing black people to speak in court and raising money to help free enslaved people who traveled through California. She supplied runaway slaves with money and homes to prepare them for their new lives. For many months, they, they spent in an abolitionist community in Chatham, Canada, where she met and aided abolitionist John Brown in his raid. Let's go to the thought bubble. On the evening of October 16, 1859, radical activists known as John Brown and a group of his supporters left their farmhouse hideout to Harper's Ferry. The next morning, they had captured citizens and seized federal armor and arsenal. His plan was to supply the weapons to the slaves so they could fight for their freedom. However, fate had another way. They were soon cornered by the local militia led by Colonel Robert E. Lee. Ten of his men were killed, including two of his sons. Brown hid out for a, two, for a few hours until he was captured by law enforcement. He was found guilty of murder and executed on December 2nd, 1859. When he was hanged, there was a note in his pocket that said, The axe laid at the foot of the tree. When the first blow is stuck, there will be more money to help. The note was given to him by Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant herself. It was found that she donated $30,000 to make this raid happen. Although the raid wasn't a complete success, it sparked tension throughout the nation. So the real question is, would there have really been a raid on Harper's Ferry without Mary Ellen Pleasant? Thank you, Thought Bubble. After Mary Ellen Pleasant's husband died in 1877, she continued to help escape black slaves by donating money and hiding them in her home. She was also involved in several court cases that fought against Black oppression. Toward the end of her life, she was involved in a scandalous affair involving a Mr. Thomas Bell, a rich businessman of Scottish descent. It is said that she took large sums of his fortune to help the abolitionist cause, but that was never verified. 
It was actually said that they had worked together and from there she furthered her knowledge on how to run a business. She had designed and built a mansion in Mr. Bell's name, seeing that black women couldn't have owned any land. After his death, his widow sued for the estate and sadly left Miss Mary Ellen Pleasant without the fortune she lived on. She was declared bankrupt in 1899, but was worth at least $35,000 to $150,000 at the time. They began to refer to her as Mammy Pleasant in the press which at the time was a stereotypical representation of black women. To which Pleasant responded, I don't like to be called Mammy by everybody. Put that down. I am not Mammy to everybody in California. I got a letter from a minister in Sacramento. I was to addressed to Mammy Pleasant. I wrote back to him on his own paper that my name was Miss Mary E. Pleasant. I wouldn't waste any of my paper on him. As the rapper JT said, mm, no bars. On January 4th, 1904, she died of old age and was buried in California. Today, there's an entire day dedicated to her and she is praised as the mother of civil rights. With her platform, Mary Ellen Pleasant could have just lived a quiet life, but instead she decided to serve as a voice to help others and fight against the oppressive system of what we know as slavery. <laughs>